Hello everyone and welcome to our second lecture in chapter 11. This one's on the lower federal courts, so the courts that are actually underneath the Supreme Court. If you guys take a take a second and look at the map that's on screen, this is actually um, the list of the district court regions um, across our country and you can see Michigan is in the sixth district. All right, so let's get started. Sorry about that, one click. All right, so first off, we're going to talk about constitutional courts. So um, one thing that we haven't talked too much about is that there are actual courts that are established directly by the Constitution. Um, and you can see what they are there just underneath um, that first bullet point. They're federal district courts. You have federal court of appeals, and then you have courts of international trade. Um, so they deal with various things and kind of break up the federal court system. So they're you don't have everything going directly to the Supreme Court. So let's talk about the federal district courts because they're the big uh, set of courts across the country that are um, kind of do most of the work and look at most of the cases that our federal court system takes a look at. So the district courts serve as trial courts. So what that means is they try both criminal and civil cases and they're courts with original jurisdiction. So they're actually trying trials or trying cases that have not been heard before. They're not on appeal. They're not moved up to the Supreme Court or other appeals courts and so forth. We actually have 94 district courts um, currently in our country. And like I said, they do most of the work. Now, in terms of juries that serve on these courts as well as others, we actually have two types of juries. You have a grand jury, which um, grand juries sit in... in preside over a case and they issue indictments, which are formal accusations of a crime or action. And then you have what are called petite juries. This is your trial jury. This is typically what you guys actually know a jury as. It's those 12 people that are sitting in the box as you see in the upper right hand corner of the screen. And they provide two types of decisions. In criminal cases, they will issue verdicts. So basically, hey, you're going to go to jail for this amount of time. Whereas in civil cases, they will find for um, find, in the find the case for either the plaintiff or the defendant. And usually it'll be an issue of like, hey, you need to pay this amount of damages or the, give this restitution. All right. So now on the courts themselves, the other courts and how are sorry, excuse me, our courts and how they actually work. Um, well, first off, you actually have different officers that preside over the courts outside of just the judges themselves. You have district attorneys, which um, work within the system and will try cases. Um, usually they're the ones arguing for, um, you know, a victim or arguing for the state or the federal government. You have magistrates, which are kind of lower judges that will issue uh, arrest warrants um, and function to kind of preside over cases that may not necessarily need to go all the way up and be in certain trials. Um, you also have bankruptcy judges, which obviously deal with bankruptcy cases. And then you have U.S. Marshals, which they're used by our court systems to help keep order in the court, but also they make arrests. Um, they relocate people, protect people, do a lot of other things. Um, but they're, that's more for another, another case and another um, topic. Now, our next form of courts are the Court of Appeals. Now, the Court of Appeals are, they try cases that are appealed. Um, so basically people are like, that were found guilty of something, they don't like the ruling, so they issue an appeal. If it's granted, it goes to the Court of Appeals. Um, generally, what the Court of Appeals was created for was to ease the workload that was going to the Supreme Court. Because a lot of what was happening is you'd have these cases that were tried in the district courts or even at state levels, and then they would be appealed um, by writ and they'd go all the way to the Supreme Court. There was nothing in between. So they created a court of appeals so that that would actually ease that workload. Um, we actually have uh, 13 court of appeals. There's 12 for each of the districts or each circuit. And then you have one for a national, the national um, court of appeals. Um, and what they can do is they can actually do three things. They can uphold the decision that was made previously. They can reverse the decision or they can send the case back to the lower court um, where it came from and tell them that they, excuse me, that they need to try it again. Mm. I'm sorry about that. 
All right, the next court we have is the Court of International Trade. This is basically, it just deals with anything dealing with international trade, in particular tariffs and the laws that surround tariffs and um, the money coming in um, or taxes being charged on goods coming in from other countries. All right, now this group, this next uh, type of courts that we have are actually not part of the judicial branch um, by themselves. They're actually part of the legislative branch and it's because they're created by legislative body and they're given, and remember our constitution gives our legislative branch the ability to create courts. Um, and the reason why they have these this ability is to help them exercise their actual powers that are laid out in article one specifically the enumerated powers. So basically, we're just gonna go through what these actual courts are. The first one is the US Court of Federal Claims. It has your original jurisdiction and generally it deals with claims against the United States for money damages. So like for example, if the federal government was going through building something and they come across your property and damage something and you file a claim against it, that'd be something that they would actually deal with. Um, the next one's the U.S. Tax Court. This is a, also a trial court, original jurisdiction, and it deals with cases over federal taxes. And by the way, the years there are the years these, these courts were actually created. <laughs> Excuse me. These next two courts um, are also legislative courts. The first one here on screen is the Court of Appeals for the Armed Forces. This is actually the highest uh, appeals court um, that we have um, for the armed forces. It has appellate jurisdiction because it's an appeals court. So it deals with appealed cases. Um, and this deals with cases for generally breaking military law. And the difference here is though, is this, even though it's a legislative court brings in the military, the Supreme Court has a direct link here to actually review these cases if needed. The last set of courts here on the screen are the territorial courts. And these are the actual courts that are um, in our territories. So think of um, the Virgin Islands, American Samoa, Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico, Guam, and so forth. These are basically district courts, but in those actual territories. And they handle all cases in those territories outside of ones that are pushed up to appeals, case, appeals courts or um, the Supreme Court. They deal with civil cases, criminal cases, and even constitutional cases. All right, the next set of legis legislative courts are the three that you see on screen. We have the courts of DC. So these are actual federal district courts and court of appeals just within DC, and they handle all the cases that are in that district. Very similar to territorial courts, but for the District of Columbia. The next one is the Court of Veterans Appeals. Okay, should be pretty obvious what this court actually does. This is actually linked in with a cabinet level position within um, the Defense Department. And these deal, they deal mostly cases with veteran benefits, but they do other cases with veterans and so forth. Um, generally, it's over unsettled claims of, you know, like pensions and aid and so forth that veterans are given. And then we have the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court. This was, um, we had authorized, the courts were authorized to spy on subject. We had, um, excuse me, we had a system where we actually had authorizations of, uh, intelligence officers and spies to look at suspects spying against the United States. So basically kind of going against foreign intelligence agencies. This actually wasn't a big issue. This court wasn't until the Patriot Act in 2001, which approved wiretaps and searches of anyone suspected of terrorist activities or clandestine, so spying activities. And this is where this court has kind of taken off and it has been pretty um, questionable in its use, particularly with the Patriot Act, as you can see here, the Patriot Act turning citizens into suspects since 2001. Obviously, that is um, something that's against the Patriot Act. Now, there can be warrants, but there's warrants and no public can be issued without probable causes. So basically what this is, is you still have to have probable cause, but the idea of prob probable cause has kind of been a little murky, um, at least once the per at the beginning of the Patriot Act, which is why there was such criticism that was kind of surrounding this. All right, uh, just a couple more. Uh, we have the selection of judges. So remember, judges are appointed by the president with consent from the Senate. And we just had a current uh, Supreme Court justice appointed. 
Um, now, generally, judges are appointed by party affiliation. They, they may not be Democrat or Republican themselves specifically, but how they actually um, lean in terms of what their um, rulings have been in the past. And generally, a president is going to favor a judge from their own party because they're going to have similar, similar leanings and in, in possibly um, rule on cases the way they would want them ruled upon. Now, Congress can increase the number of judgeships. we got to watch out for that and see what might actually happen with that over here over the next few months and years um, because of what just happened with the appointment of, uh, of Justice Barrett to the Supreme Court very quickly. Um, and now with Biden becoming president, that may change. Um, I actually, it'll be interesting to see how that works um, in, in the, whether judgeships are increased or judges are removed and replaced. We'll see how that goes. And then judicial philosophy is also very important in the selection of judges because remember, judges are appointed for life and they actually can be an extension of a president's ideals even long after they leave. Because remember, appointments generally are a political issue. And when you appoint somebody that favors your party affiliation, whether they're the right person for the job, whether they're pushed through quickly, um, or they're, you know, they have a political backing in the Senate that can say, all right, we're going to approve this candidate, whoever, you know, it is, in the case of Judge Kavanaugh, and even to the similar extent, um, Judge Barrett, that can be a problem or a benefit, depending on what you're looking at. And this is also why this is a big question in terms of what we're going to see with judgeships, whether there's judges removed or in judgeships are increased because of the nature of um, President Trump's last two uh, appointed Supreme Court justices. All right, and then next, um, with sec selection of judges, you have senatorial con courtesy. Um, basically, what this is is just kind of the idea that the president is going to submit a name of candidates to state senators, and then they kind of just look at the ju judge names and say, okay, this is somebody that's probably good, this is probably somebody that's not, if there's really any strong opposition from the party um, the, of the president, they'll probably withdraw those names or have to look for somebody else. Um, and then the background, generally, you have to look at your, your Supreme Court judges with who they are, um, what their experience is with the law, um, did they have any positions in government, government, as well as extended law positions, such as being a professor, district attorney, judges and other avenues and so forth. But most more recently, we've actually seen the Supreme Court become more diverse with minorities and or women being appointed um, to the Supreme Court at an increasing level. All right, guys, that's all I got for you. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one.